characters away. Mm -hmm. All right, we're already into our third week here, and it, that is what, uh, that, that's how um, it's all going to be attached from the bow of your boat to the anchor itself, the, the road. The types of anchors um, up here, we've got, I mentioned the dam for it. Let me go back here. Sorry about that. Working with one hand doesn't always work too good for me. I'm right handed and I'm working with my left. So the uh, Danforth up here, mushroom. In some cases, you might have a grapnel anchor. And these are both typically known as plow anchors, okay? Um, <clears throat> there's one version of plow anchor hanging downstairs, and it's about the same size as this Danforth that I held up, but that plow anchor that's downstairs is 33 pounds, where this one is 15. There are advantages, though, to, to the, the plow anchor. We'll get into that as well. Okay, again, the Danforth, the plow, and then the others that I mentioned. So, as far as the Danforth type anchor, again, it is lightweight. The neat thing about it is you can see it stows flat. And yet, it'll also open up to dig into the, to the seabed. Typically best in sand and mud, okay? And it's not the best for grassy areas or rocks. It doesn't seem to have the, uh, the digging in ability. It's not going to uh, hold as well on rocks. And that, that's where the plow anchor will, will serve better for you. Plow anchor has a single fluke. It's three-dimensional, and that, in a, in and of itself, makes it more applicable to uh, to hold on to the rocky bottoms. If anyone has any questions as we go along, don't don't hesitate. Typically, it needs to be stowed in a chocker or roller, though, because it is heavy. You don't, what, the last thing you want is a loose anchor, like a missile hazard aboard your, aboard your, your boat. As I said, uh, this one will dig through the weeds. It will work just fine in sand as well. But it will also hold on to the rocks. One thing that it's not best for is deep mud, though, okay? Uh, the rest of the story here is that it also may be hard to retrieve because it does dig in as well as it does. So the use of a trip line, and what that's all about is you attach another line to the top of the, of the, of the shank with a float on it, and it's just straight up. It serves a couple purposes. It's another line that you can use to retrieve the anchor when it's time to go, but it also tells you and the boaters around you that there's an anchor right beneath that buoy, okay? Sorry about that. Okay, again, choosing the right anchor. Again, here's the plow, here's the dam for it, some other examples of the plow. Okay, next we're going to talk about the road. And one thing I want to say about that, the road is another term for the, for the anchor line itself, but one of, the, one of the key things that you always, always, always have to make sure you've done, I, even before you leave dock, is make sure that you've got your line attached <laughs> securely 
to your boat, okay? I've personally seen it at least twice where drop the, drop the, uh, the anchor in and you watch your anchor line go out, and I'm still using that term anchor line because it just keeps going out and suddenly you see it disappear. And that's also known as the end of the road. <laughs> anchor line, proper term is road. And when you reach the end of the road, it's not a good thing. So, again, the road connects the boat to the anchor. Part rope and part chain. And here at the nest egg, West Marine makes this really cool hole in a bucket kit. I think there's 140 or 150 feet of line here, and it's ice spliced right into a chain. So, uh, and I'll say that one of the reasons that you want the chain, and the chain then gets attached by a shackle to the top of your your. In salt water could be coral, and so if you just have, have the nylon line, that's going to get chafed a lot and shredded. It's not going to last real long, but the chain does its job. And again, the chain is typically um, half, the, half the length of, of your boat. If it's more, that's fine too. I think, Paul, don't you use all chain on, yeah. for your road? Yeah, the chain also helps to keep the, uh, the anchor. Oh, exactly. Very good point, Jim. Yes, I should have mentioned that. Um, because the chain is heavy, it'll keep the uh, the anchor horizontal, and that's what what uh, allows the anchor to do its job, that horizontal pull. Okay? And again, you want the right size for your boat and the conditions. The length is based on the depth and the conditions that you're operating in. And as you see in this illustration here, the, the use of depth markers on the rope. Some ropes come even color-coded, um, but if you're going to make your own marks, uh, like a little survey tape, that sort of thing, and uh, put it along the line. Make sure that you measure it so you, so it's not just a guess, so you know where the 10 foot, 20 foot, 30 foot, 40 foot mark are. So that chain that you have on that first table there, the ideal then for approximately, you said it's half the distance of your boat. The chain you have right there again, right? Isn't that what you said? Should be ideally, the chain should be half the length of your boat? This is really short. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it's a good example. Well, if you got an eight foot boat, that'd be. <laughs> there you go. Four foot boat. It is amazing, though, even with a. For sure, it's, this isn't going to be sitting up here. The chain's going to drop that down and, yeah, it's and dig in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and um, this is another um, commonly referred to as a Navy anchor. This, this is what you see. Well, I was aboard an aircraft carrier for 42 months, and and this is what you have on, on Navy ships. A little um, bigger. A, a little <laughs> bit bigger. I was going to bring in some pictures, but yeah, the, the anchor would uh, probably fill up about a third of this room, and there's, and there's a pair of anchors on each ship. So, and uh, I think I mentioned earlier, but this is 15 pounds, whereas this is 10 right here. 
and this happens to be 12 pounds. This is a modified mushroom anchor. Um, a lot of these are used in this area here, but uh, for smaller fishing boats, that sort of thing. Is that a river typically? Yeah, in the, exactly. Is that the typical weight of a Danforth anchor, or they all vary in size? Well, they vary in size. But yeah, but there's, there's some larger ones downstairs here as well, but there's also smaller ones. So um, again, the, um, and it'll, it'll tell you right, right on the label here, for example, it says this one's recommended for boats 28 to 30 feet. So this is, you know, it, it's very usable because it's still lightweight. Um, also, one thing to mention here, at the top of the tank, they've come out with this really nice pivots, swivel anchors. I'm going to let Jim say something about this. Jim, you, you've used one of these for years. Uh, yes, it's, it's, it's phenomenal because it, it rotates like this. So when you're bringing the anchor up, it's not going to go like this. But when you're, it's down or trying to set, this will turn. Otherwise, if you just have a shackle, the shackle is locked tight. This will just turn to any angle you want it to turn. And as you bring it this around, when it does kind of get flopping around, coming up on the bow, and hits the roller, it'll just turn until it's straight, and then it just comes right on board. It, it's one of the best accessories I've ever seen for an anchor. Okay. Anchor operation. Okay. So this shows how the anchor actually secures itself to the bottom, this being a, a sandy, a little bit muddy bottom. And this is a, 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 a Danforth anchor. And now this is a plow anchor. And you'll see how this plow, the reason it's called a plow is look how it, it just keeps digging in. It literally plows itself right in. As your slats enter, they can be a real problem to get up to a certain bottom, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, you don't want to use a plow anchor without a, a line to, to uh, try and loosen it up. Did you notice, when John was explaining earlier, did you notice when they were pulling that anchor, that chain was always flat to the sand and kept the chain down so it could pull in and set? That's another reason for the chain. Yeah, the chain is, is really important to have. Okay, now we're going to talk about the thing called the scope. It's the length of line, the length of the line from the boat to the anchor, and also it's the ratio of the length of the line to the vertical distance. Now, all that means is here's the bow of your boat. This is where you're anchoring, and then your depth here from the top of your boat, of your bow, down to the seabed, okay? So, um, to determine your scope, you want to know your water depth and your boat height. And then your scope becomes a multiple, and what the multiple is, and I usually like to use the example and just go, I like to be prepared. So that the, for heavy conditions, 10 times the, uh, the length, let me go back here again. Ten times the distance from your bow to your anchor, or ten times the distance from your water, I apologize, from the depth of your water. Um, so, for example, what I'm trying to say is that if your water is ten feet deep and the height of your bow above the water surface is four feet, so you've got fourteen feet, you'd want to, to be prepared for heavy seas, 
you, you'd want a road, meaning your scope, of 140 feet, okay? I'm going to back up one more here. Okay. Under normal conditions, seven times would be okay. In very calm waters, five times would be okay. So if it was five times and you had 10 feet of water and four feet above the water's surface to, to the top of your bow, you'd have 14 feet then 70 feet of road would be fine. Everyone get that concept? Yes. So the, la the last thing that you want is to have your, your beautiful boat out there and only have 30 feet of road or 30 feet of anchor line. Bad idea. So to summarize here, it's all about the horizontal pull. Deeper water, you're going to need more scope. More wind or current, you're going to need more scope. Okay, some ideas about the anchor system. Size your rope and chain correctly. So again, make sure that you you do have enough uh, anchor line or, or rope uh, aboard for your needs. And, and again, as I said, the, the chain, we, we talked about a general rule of thumb at, at least half the length of your boat. And the shackles are the weakest link. This being your shackle right here. This is the attachment. This is this is what attaches to the top of the anchor to the shank. John, you, you accidentally hit your whoops. You jumped about five. Sorry five about that. Nights. Oops, oops, and oops. Thank you, Jim. Did one of you say you were in that bad storm when Door County came through two years ago all of the water? No? Um Pat. Pat. That was Manami, right? Yeah, that was Manami. We were not on the Oh, you weren't in sailing. Yeah. You were where? You were sailing. sailing. Wait a minute. Oh, oh you were even I sailing. Yeah, but you weren't in the best one. But as far as anchoring goes, I know a few years ago, people were washing up in George, George County because they were not anchored properly. Yeah, we were over there, not on our boat, but on the land. And in Elvis Bay, watching it come across, it was absolutely insane to see that storm come across. I mean, you, were, you were not on sailing at that time? No, I didn't sail. You were sailing through that storm? Not, not two years ago, it was about five years ago. Oh, okay. No, I was out. Yeah. But that's, yeah. We saw, we saw the storm coming through and sails down. Um, yeah. The sails boarded in there. But when the winds hit, they went up to about 72 knots. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, at that point, you just kind of pointed the wind and waited for it to end. It didn't last long. Continue on. Yeah. Somebody, when we got into Fish Creek, somebody came in and they tried to land through the storm. They tried to land. Tried to storm. Yeah, to dock. Yeah, to dock. Yeah. 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 yeah, so of course I had to ask him afterwards, I said, where, where do you, why are they trying to come in? He said, well, there's some lightning and stuff, so we thought it was safer here. So I asked him, it's a natural question, so when you got in, what did you do? We stayed under a boat until it stopped raining. Yeah. I said, well, <laughs> Kind of the same, you know. <laughs> so, I, again, going back, uh, I finally found where I was here again. So, as I was saying, shackles are the weak, the weakest link here. And so, uh, you also want to remember to always safety wire your shackle pins. And everyone know what I'm talking about? These are the shackle pins right here, and this is what. This unscrews so that you can attach the chain to it. Okay. Um, when they're talking about wiring it, there's a little hole here in each of these marine shackles, and you just wire that here so that it can't turn out on you. Okay, it can't unscrew. Because over time, if you don't have that secured, this is going to loosen up, and bingo, you're out of luck again. 
or you could be out of luck. Okay. And again, that chain prevents the chaffing of the road as well. The chain is obviously stronger. We already talked about the uh, no chaffing on the, on the chain. And as we also mentioned several times, it keeps the road on the bottom. So you need that horizontal pull. Um, key things about the, the line or the rope is that uh, the nylon line, it's lighter, it stretches. Because it stretches, it's a shock absorber. That can be very, very important. However, it is subject to chaff, meaning wearing, abrasion, and becoming less, uh, less uh, durable and, and subject to failure. So what you want is a combination of chain near the anchor and the rope back to the boat. And again, the rope going back to the boat and everything, it's all, you're all looking at it as the scope, right? It's key points to remember. Now, for anchoring techniques, you want to survey your anchorage area carefully, determine what your depth and the type of bottom that you're dealing with, see what your winds are and the, if there's any currents in the area, allow for changes in the wind and tide, and you want to check the clearance to boats and obstacles. In other words, when you get there, know what's around you, 360, all the way around you because the winds can certainly, you've all seen how the winds can change throughout the day. And, and you've all seen how, how boats can typically pivot on your anchor point, okay? Anchoring techniques. So when it comes to setting the anchor, you want either power or sail into the wind or current, so head upwind, lower the anchor, don't just throw it in, lower it in, so all these ideas about just throwing your anchor in, not a good idea. And then you want to drift or power backwards, letting out the road, ready? Letting out your anchor line. And if you're able to apply a little power to set that anchor, again, as you saw in the video, it's all about getting that anchor to secure itself to the bottom, to the seabed. Then you want to take your bearings. Why would you want to take your bearings? Anyone have any answers to that? Save your dragon anchor. Absolutely. <laughs> And again, uh, here's an example talking about the trip line attached to the anchor, particularly if you have a plow type anchor. So you can see in the illustration there with the buoy above that. Okay, we'll talk about how it helps to free us a, a snagged anchor. And as I mentioned earlier, the float indicates the anchor position to other boaters as well. So when it comes to retrieving the anchor, you want to approach it slowly. You want to take in and stow your road, meaning your anchor line. And when you're over the anchor, you hopefully can pull it free. If it is stuck, you can cleat the line near the bow, never at the stern. Why wouldn't you want to do it at the stern? You may get it fouled in the prop, but you may also end up with your stern awash you may end up even sinking. You don't want that. 
So you want to power over and past the anchor location if you're able to, and then take in the road. And that's all I have to say I right now. I one comment is if, if your anchor is stuck seriously on the bottom of the rocks or some junk on the bottom, it might be cheaper to just to cut it and set it free rather than to try to work it out by getting it in an underbolt and trying to break it out that way. Break, you could break things on your boat. It would be more expensive than the anchor. A uh, um, couple other things that... Um, yeah could mention is always have a, a backup anchor as well or have more than one anchor for different conditions you know if you're over uh, if you're on the on the west shore of the Bay of Green Bay you're gonna find a lot of sand over by Peshtigo Reef the reef is all sand but you go south towards Okano and you're gonna find a lot of rocks over in Door County you're gonna find a lot of rocks so different anchors for different applications also if your anchor isn't retrievable, at least you have another anchor to work with. Any other questions at all? Thanks for bearing with me with my trying to use my left arm, and I'm not a lefty.